So I was, I was speaking with a team about this this morning and Ash specifically, who does sales on the team, he's still developing his conviction. He is newer. He's been here for maybe three weeks, maybe four. He's still getting into it, but he's still wanting to develop that conviction. Now we have the best results in our market. So it's not the service or the product. Like he knows it's good. He knows that clients are getting great results because he's seeing it. How else can he develop conviction? Love people more. You just have to care more. As one's love for people grows, so does their conviction in helping them make the best decision for them. And so that's one of the biggest things that increased my conversion rate was as I grew in my character, I'm not saying I'm, I'm perfect now, but I think as I've grown personally in my love for people, then my conviction in those conversations grows because I could be confident that the solution is gonna help them but not really care about it helping. I both have to be confident that it's going to help them and really care that it will. Yeah, that's a great question. Outside of that, what I see is really detaching from increasing your awareness and your mental health, because I think that the better mental state someone is in, the more you naturally love people. And I do just see that, that we are just made as human beings to love people that we want to love people but we get so caught up in overstimulation and distractions and just all the junk around us and so just having the right inputs into your mind getting around the right kind of people you're going to start seeing people differently and caring that's like the thirty thousand foot answer because otherwise we could talk about that for a feel like i think it's like the real answer you know there's like yeah. the tactical answers and then there's the the real deep answer and i just want to make sure for people who are listening who are earlier on in the journey and maybe they're like well i don't know how to <laughs> i don't know how to do that it's a love for my girlfriend or something um that they can take take something away and i think for me what i what i hear from that is like to focus on yourself internally yes. to get yourself into a good state whether that's meditating whether that's working out whether that's spending time with people who you love to just be more in that state I think those things can help. One thing that actually has helped me, which I don't see talked about much, is play. Like the importance of play and enjoyment, because that's something that I definitely went through a period of being very serious. Um, everything was super serious. I was taking calls all day and it was like, next one, next one, next one. And my state was just very dense. And so like, I then started to intentionally bring in play, whether that's just like having fun on a team call or like actually play and actually go and do something outside and play finally gets you into that childlike state as well which i think is it's so key because like it makes people want to be around you and i know it's like a weird unorthodox sort of thing to talk about but i do really think it affects how you come across in interactions which then affects your sales yep yep you're 100 right a little tactic piece that i can maybe give with that is if you're going straight from one call into the next you're doing it wrong you should try to be able to give yourself those little bit of buffer times. Sometimes we just need to, even if we don't have time to get in more of that play, you know, you do that in general in your life, but even just in between calls, being able to decompress and reset, even if that's just 10, 15 minutes can be really helpful. You know, let's say, especially you have a call that doesn't go well or how you hoped it would being able to go for, I know one thing that I do is just go for a walk. And even just going and walking for five to 10 minutes outside would really help me to reset and to come to the next call, just being in the present. I think that's so key. I think it's so easy just to sit there on your computer all day and just like stare at that screen. And then naturally like your state is going to just drop throughout the day. Sedentary. Yep. What about if we go into some of the things that people get wrong about sales? Like, are there some common things that you've seen through your own experience and coaching a lot of entrepreneurs at this point on what gets yeah. wrong about sales? Yeah. So the most glaring thing from a mindset standpoint that I think really trickles down to everything else is just that with sales, you have to be, because you're trying to convince someone to do something for your own gain. That's how people see sales. If you're trying to convince someone to do something for your own gain. Then I have to be this shark in order to be good at sales. But that's just not true. Because if you're actually doing what we just talked about, you're, you're not being a shark at all. You're not doing wrong by anybody. Because that's really what that comes down to is like, well, I, 
I'm just uncomfortable trying to pressure someone into making a decision. That's not what you're doing, right? Think about it like a loved one. If your sibling, your brother, your sister is about to make a terrible decision, you don't feel like you're pressuring them by trying to convince them to make the right decision. You just want them to make the right decision because you want what's best for them. That's what sales is at its best. I've done this myself is like, I'll have a bunch of calls with my niche, which is in real estate. And then, you know, I'll find out all of the things that annoy me about them and that I don't like about them. And unconsciously, I'll develop like a judgment towards them, right? Where I like won't actually like them. This is what happened to me. This is, and this is why I got so burnt out um, like a few times is because I didn't like getting on those calls. So I feel like I know what the high level answer is here, but I was just curious to see if you had any insight on how to get to that point where, because I think everyone wants that, right? Everyone wants to have that connection with people. And it's like, we want, connection is like one of our six human needs that we will need. And we will crave yeah. that and we will desire that. And if there's an epidemic of, of, of that right now. So how, how do we like cultivate that connection with prospects on the sales call? Yeah, compassion. Just having compassion for people, thinking about where they're at, everything that they're going through in, your, in their life that you do and don't know why they have the struggles that they have, why they might come to the call stressed out and just kind of being impatient with everything that they're stressed out about. Ima imagine what happens on a sales call if you notice that someone is just stressed as you're trying to present information. You just say, hey man, can we just stop and just take a deep breath real quick? I feel like you're you're a little stressed right now and I, I don't wanna just throw a bunch of information at you that you're not really ready to receive. And so is there something that we need to talk about, something we can address? It's like, well, yeah, man, like I'm just stressed about this and that, whatever. And then you address those things. Now, you know, do you want to talk about building rapport? You know, the amount of rapport that that builds. And then now you move forward. It's not, it's not these strategies. It's not, ooh, I'm trying to have this certain tonality. I'm trying to whatever. I'm just genuinely caring. I'm just genuinely being in the present and observing that person through having compassion. That's really what the answer is. And so then you take off, you have to strip away those those biases and then just say, I'm just gonna approach this call with a fresh slate. I'll, I'll tell you, man, like it's, it's constantly gonna be a temptation, right? It's just like anything that we overcome in our personal development, maybe it now no longer has the hold on you it once did, but it's still a temptation to go back. To. And so don't be surprised when the temptation comes when you've had a long day and you're getting on another call that it's not gonna, that, that you're gonna feel like it or that you're not gonna have a temptation to be impatient, but that's where those resets come and I think are important. Yeah, I feel like these things are fundamentals and then it's just a case of staying on that path, right? And continuing to remember and actually do these things that you're sharing, right? And it's that consistent practice. How did you say stay consistent over 10,000 sales calls at like, I'm sure there were peaks and troughs, but like, yes. how, did you, how did you overall stay consistent? Yeah, I think the biggest thing to be honest was just the positive feedback, right? I mean, the amount of people that were just like, it just feels like you really care or this did not go how I thought it would, whatever. Like just the amount of times that that would happen, it just felt so good. And so I think that that was the biggest thing was I, I just got so much, psychological reward, probably so much dopamine or whatever neurochemicals that made me feel good about myself and what I was doing, that it just kept me motivated to keep doing. And I would say there were so many times where, especially the more experience that I got, where I would feel like crap going into a call and over time, just developing that switch and just being able to just switch on was, was really powerful. So I'd say just getting the reps in and then getting so much positive feedback.